might hold the key without even knowing it. Could it be you? The discovery that may unlock the mystery. An all-new Dateline next Friday. We always look out for each other. We will always be a family. Go on to me real tight. I have never been prouder. All new Chicago Wednesday, September 22nd on NBC. The news came quickly that terrifying morning. Two jets had crashed into the Twin Towers. A third had hit the Pentagon. Then the towers collapsed. It is a day of catastrophe. For I was anchoring at MSNBC from you. We're getting more information in that situation. when we got word of a fourth plane. A large plane crashed just north of the Somerset County Airport, 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. After all her calls with her husband, Tom, Dina Burnett got the news she dreaded. The phone dropped, and I just remember feeling as though I was never going to be able to move again. She gathered strength later in the evening to tell her three young daughters. It doesn't get any tougher, does it? It does not get tougher than that. Than to look into the face of a child and let them know that their parent is dead. Yeah, do either of you have a sense that he may walk in the door again? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I had no idea what death was. My mom has always said that I, in particular, always would be like, oh, is he coming back from his trip? Is he going to come home next week? Cece Lyle's sons, Jerome and Javon, say after that day, they were never the same. Did either of you experience moments of anger? Right now. <laughs> right now? Yeah. Right now, in this moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, listen, I mean, let it out. I mean, uh... oh, man, almost every day thinking about it. And then you got to think about the fact that God will never give you nothing you can't handle. And our mom was super strong. And it turned out they discovered something a few days after the crash. During the flight, their mom had left a final message on their answering machine for the boys and their stepfather. I want to tell you I love you. Please tell my children that I love them very much. And I'm so sorry, babe. Um, I don't know what to say. I hope to be able to see your face again, baby. I love you. Bye. I can imagine a message like that as a blessing and a curse. Right. But yet something that you want to cherish. Something to hold on to. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. For many of the families, their grief has never really gone away. Phil Bradshaw says the moment when he lost his wife feels like it just happened yesterday. You drop to your knees and you cry like a baby, because that's what I did. You know, it's, it's, it's bad losing someone, but to lose them suddenly, it's even worse. Not a day goes by, I don't think about Sandy. The day is imprinted in my head. For Jack Grancolis, that day meant facing the loss of his wife, Lauren, and their unborn child. Everybody deals with grief in their own way. It sounds like it took you down a really deep and dark hole. It did. I, I remember looking in that deep abyss and saying, this is not the way I want to go. But more importantly, it wouldn't be the way Lauren would want me to live on. And that was what saved me. I can just hear her spirit, and her spirit kept me going. And it's the spirit of United 93 that spurs the families on to commemorate this 20th anniversary. Well, I think of Jody's age and her generation, there's a good chance that a lot of her peers have vague or no recollection of 9-11. Is that concerning to you? Well, it's important to keep the legacies of these people alive, all these souls that were lost on that day. Nearly 3,000 people died on 9-11. That number might have been even higher if the passengers and crew on Flight 93 hadn't been willing to sacrifice their own lives. Investigators believe their selfless act 
prevented the terrorists from reaching a fourth target, either the White House or the U.S. Capitol. Flight 93 symbolized the human spirit rising up against terror, rising up and saying, we're not going to sit idly by while you take our lives and the lives of others. I think that they're all heroes, every single one of them. Over the summer, we brought some of the children of Flight 93 together, the Green family, the Burnetts, and the sons of Cece Lyles. Many of them had never met before. You could tell they shared a special bond and a sense of mission as the next generation. I'm on the board of the Friends of Flight 93. It is an organization that is working towards that mission of making sure that on the 30th anniversary or the 37th anniversary. People are still talking about Flight 93 with that narrative of 9-11. Jerome, do you feel a responsibility to talk about it, to, to share the story? Yes, I do. It is our duty, it is our job to keep this legacy, to keep our story, to remember those people that gave their lives heroically. Anna Claire, what do you think sh we should be holding on to as we move forward? Unity and just trying to live our lives in their legacy. The other message is, is one of resilience, Keep knowing going. that resilience is a muscle. So much of what happened on that day, uh, I think over the years we've been able to, to reflect on as being an immense tragedy. But on the 20th anniversary, there's something, and maybe it's just sitting on this couch with, with you all that maybe feels a little bit different. I agree. Yeah, I mean, when I think about 9-11 in Flight 93 in particular, I think about a day of immense darkness. I think about the great hope and bravery that was demonstrated by the passengers of Flight 93. Just for one day. And that in the midst of darkness, there's still light pouring in. We can be heroes forever and ever. Many of the children plan to be in Shanksville tomorrow to observe the 20th anniversary with their families. That's all for this edition of Dateline. I'm Lester Holt. For all of us at NBC News, good night. The NFL is back, and DraftKings' latest offer is a sure thing. So we got former automatic NFL kicker Martin Gramatica to break it down. Martin? Bet just $1 on any NFL game, get 200 Automatica, no matter what. That is Automatica, Martin Gramatica. It's no stressy, Jesse. Download the app, sign up with the promo code. Bet $1 to get 200 automatically and make it rain with an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Working for you. 12 News at 11 starts now. Good evening and welcome to 12 News at 11. I'm Gina Cadigan. Thanks so much for joining me. It was yet another day of increased COVID-19 cases all around West Virginia as the state now has more than 24,000 active cases. The DHHR included 2,379 new cases on its report today, putting the number of total cases, uh, total active cases at 24,532. The Delta variant also continues to spread across the state as there are now 1,514 cases, according to the DHHR. As for the state's death toll, it's now above 3,200 as 18 deaths were included in today's DHHR report. They include five local deaths from Barber, Upshur, Lewis, and Marion counties. We know that people in the hospital, um, about 85% of our hospitalized patients are not vaccinated, 90% of our ICU patients not vaccinated, 91 to 93% of our people on ventilators not vaccinated. Since Wednesday, 4,800 more people in the Mountain State were vaccinated, but Governor Jim Justice and his team wants more people to get their shots. West Virginia University is expanding its mask mandate. 
Starting this coming Monday, all students, staff, and faculty will be required to wear a mask indoors at all times in all WVU buildings and facilities, regardless of vaccination status. The university says the mandate will be in place until at least October 6th. They also say the mandate does not affect Milan Pushkar Stadium, meaning fans at tomorrow's WVU football game will not be required to wear masks, but are are instead encouraged to wear one. Memorials are set all over the country to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. On that day, nearly 3,000 people were killed while going through their normal morning routines. Jay Gray reports from Ground Zero. The echo of bagpipes, barricades, and a growing show of force at Ground Zero. Final preparations for tomorrow's memorial here, the same place where 20 years earlier, the Manhattan skyline and soul of our nation were forever changed. That day is forever seared into all of our memories, the pain, the terror, the enormous loss, and also the incredible displays of courage. Courage that came with a promise to honor the nearly 3,000 lost on that horrible day. If we don't find light out of a tragedy, no matter what that tragedy is, it's just a tragedy. And so tomorrow, millions will pause across the country while thousands gather in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, at the Pentagon, and here in the spot where the towers once stood. What used to be here was a pit, and now it's an entire plaza. We wanted families, we wanted a place of quiet contemplation and reflection, but we also wanted it to be a place full of hope and life. Sacred ground, a place defined by these names etched in bronze, a roster of heroes that will never be forgotten. Now locally, Army and Air Force ROTC cadets at WVU marked the 20th anniversary of 9-11 with a memorial ceremony today, which also kicks off a 24-hour vigil. University President Gordon Gee, along with student veteran Devin Redding, laid a wreath to mark the occasion. And then, as part of an annual tradition, cadets stood guard of the wreath while others marched around the library quad. President Gee, who was the keynote speaker, says it's important to commemorate the 20th anniversary and to not forget all 9-11 taught us. I think that one of the things we have to learn from 9-11 20 years later, we have to learn uh, the art of humility and kindness, and that uh, we may have divisions in terms of the way we think, but not in the way that we act as a people. I think that right now, as a divided nation, we could learn a lot from what happened uh, 20 years ago. WVU cadets will stand guard of the wreath and patrol the quad until tomorrow, the actual anniversary of the attacks. The Vintage Theater Company's light opera troupe Montani Cantanti will be performing a 9-11 20th anniversary musical. The production features 14 stories centered around the events happening on September 11, 2001, and strives to take viewers back to where they were on that day. The musical will take place tonight and tomorrow at 7.30 at the Uptown Event Center in Clarksburg. Masks and reservations are required to make a reservation. We'll have that information for you on our website, WBOY.com. Now, the area's most accurate forecast. Storm Tracker 12 weather. Certified storm ready and powered by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. The official cleaning and restoration company of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Pleasant was the name of the game across north central West Virginia. High temperature of 73, 81 was our average. High 49 was a cool star with patches of dense fog, but it ended up being a gorgeous day. Our very own Abby Backenstow took this picture at East West Stadium this evening. The polar bears and the huskies brought beautiful crepuscular rays over in Marion County. Just beautiful scene out there as high pressure is continuing to scooch from west to east. Dry air is moving in and that's going to be giving us lots of sunshine over the next couple of days, but as high pressure moves, that's going to give us 
us warming temperatures, but still on the cooler side right now. 57 degrees, a calm wind dew point at 54, so very comfortable out there with a few patches of fog visibility down to a mile or less into Pocahontas, Randolph, and Webster County. So use those fog lamps. Temperatures are into the 50s, and those are going to go down a couple more notches. 40s into your morning, and then those temps will be rising on up into the upper 70s for your game. If you're heading out to Milan Pushkar Stadium, temperatures are going to be in the 70s. Lots of sunshine for the big game tomorrow. The Mountaineers home opener high of 80 degrees, 85 Sunday, 87 on Monday with a few more shower and storm chances Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with a little bit more humidity. So the weekend looking really, really nice, Gina. I like it. Now stick around. We'll have all of tonight's high school football highlights right after this short break. Stay with us.